Namaste. So now that Aparokshanubhuti has established that the superimposition of the material body on the self, or the reverse, the superimposition of the self on the material body, is the essence of ignorance. And the reason for this is that the self and the body are two completely opposite things in so many ways. For example, the self is the seer, the witness in all situations and at all times, whereas the body is the scene, the drishya, an object. The self is the source of life. Sometimes the self is called prana in Vedanta Sutra. But the body is basically inert. And as soon as the self leaves it, it just drops and decomposes. And again, the self is illumination. It's consciousness. And the body is darkness and sleep. So here we have two verses that are kind of an interlude between these two major sections about ignorance and the body. And the whole philosophy of Aparokshana Bhuti turns on these verses. So let's look into them. Aum Atmanas Tat Prakashatvam Yat Padartha Vabhasanam Nagnana Diddiptiva Diptir Bhavat Yandhyang Yato Nishi Atmanaha Atman Tat That Prakashatvam Illumination, yat, which, padarthavabhasanam, manifestation of all objects, na, not, agnyadidiptivat, like the light of fire, etc., diptihi, light, bhavati, exists, andhyang, darkness, yataha, Four, Nishi at night. The luminosity of Atman consists in the manifestation of all objects. Its luminosity is not like that of fire or any such thing. For despite the presence of such lights, darkness prevails at night somewhere or other. Deho hamityayang mudho dhritva tishtatyaho janaha mamaya mityapi gnyatva gata drashteva sarvada Dehaha, the body, aham, I, iti, that, ayang, this, mudhaha, Ignorant ass, dhritva, holding the view, tishtati, rests contented, aho, alas, janaha, person, mamayamiti, that this is mine, api, even, jnatva, knowing, ghatadrashteva, like a person seeing a pot, sarvada, ever, always. Alas, how strange it is that a person, like an ignorant ass, rests contented with the idea that he is the body, while he knows it as something belonging to him, and therefore apart from himself, even as a person who sees a pot, knows it as apart from him. 
These are wonderful verses. They highlight the essence of the ignorance and identification and superimposition that lead to suffering in samsara. Because once one becomes identified with the body, then one conceives of oneself as the owner of the body and also as the enjoyer or sufferer of its karma. And of course, because the material body is simply temporary, due to be uh, exterminated <laughs> sooner or later, this leads to suffering. So we keep making these choices even though we know better. It's just like we consider the body and the world to be real in dualistic consciousness, even though we know they're temporary. Even though we experience every night when we go to sleep that the body and the world disappear. And when we come back to them in the next morning, they're different. They have changed. They're not the same as they were. So, despite all of this direct evidence, we still think, I am the body. The body is mine. This is myself. This is who I am. This is ignorance. So the cure for this ignorance is the illumination given by Brahman. I was just reading in Brahma Sutras, Vedanta Sutras, Shankaracharya's commentary, where he says that the light or the illumination of Brahman is not like any ordinary light because Brahman illuminates everything in all directions, in all times and places. It's not conditional like the light of the sun and moon. When the sun is up, it lights everything, but then when it goes down, it becomes dark. So even the light of the sun is not enough to completely dispel the darkness of the material world. We talked about space. Space is the ignorance that separates the material world from the light of Brahman. That's why space is dark. And there are only a few points of light, these stars here and there, that bring illumination to it. So we should understand that just as darkness is the default condition in the material world, illumination is the default in Brahman. And he goes on to say that the illumination of Brahman is not like ordinary illumination in another way. When we perceive objects, it's because they are illuminated by light. See, you can see things when there's some light. When there's no light, you can't see. But the light or illumination of Brahman is existence itself, beingness. So wherever the light of Brahman shines, there the existence remains. And where that light is blocked, then there's nothing. For example, in deep sleep at night, we're in ignorance. We're in conditioned consciousness, sushupti. And because we're in a conditioned state, the illumination of Brahman is blocked. And therefore, there are no objects to perceive. They simply don't exist in that consciousness. 
You see, the Vedas, and especially Vedanta and Advaita, take the point of view of the subject, Atman or Brahman. There is no objective reality. In fact, this is a long-standing and well-known problem in philosophy, that there is no way to prove the objective existence of the objective world. There's no way to prove it because any evidence that we would bring forth has to come from that same world, from that same conditioned universe that is subject to fluctuations depending on the state of consciousness. <laughs> so, in other words, when we go to sleep, this body and this world disappear. So similarly, any evidence that we were to bring forth from this world would also disappear. All it takes is a little change in consciousness and poof, the whole thing is gone. So try to understand, consciousness creates existence, not the other way around. We have been given a lie, a false story, that consciousness is created by some combination of material elements or conditions. It's not true. Rather, it's the opposite. The material existence pops into being wherever the light of consciousness shines. This is Brahman. This is the illumination of Brahman. So then to move on to the next verse, that how can it be that people accept this basically inner thing, this body, as the self. How can it be? You would have to be an ignorant ass because the word is used, buddha. Buddha means ass, a donkey. Huh? If you've ever had any association with donkeys, you know they're not too bright. So you would have to be dumb like a donkey to accept this body as the self, to accept this world as real, because it's so fragile. Simply a little change in the modes of material nature, a little change in consciousness, and the whole thing is finished. We go into the dream world, or we go into deep sleep where there is no world of any kind. The best of all, is when we go into Turiya, which is the root state of consciousness from which all the others are derived. And this is meditation. This is enlightenment. This is samadhi. Uh, this is a real thing because it's always there. If you ask anyone, are you conscious? They'll say, yes, of course, I'm conscious. That means Turiya is functioning. To be conscious of consciousness is exactly the function of Turiya, the fourth state. So in this way, everybody is using Turiya all the time. Everybody is already Brahman all the time. But somehow or other, it becomes covered by ignorance. And they think, oh, I am this body. I am in this world. Huh? Whereas actually, it's completely the opposite. I am consciousness. And the body and the world are within me. And the proof of this, again, is that when the consciousness changes, so does the world. So does the body. So therefore, the body cannot be the self. There is just no way that the body could be the self. And in the same way, there is no way that we could experience this world 
without Brahman, without being Brahman, and without the illumination of Brahman's energy, which is nothing but pure consciousness. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti. Aung. <laughs>